Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a spicy version of the five color domain deck and we're running four copies of Ancient Cornucopia as one of the payoffs for playing a bunch of multicolored spells because whenever we cast a spell that's one or more colors we gain one life for each of that spell's colors and only once each turn and then the Cornucopia still helps us ramp by tapping for one man of any color so a great way to fix our colors and of course stabilize against aggro so the life gain will certainly come in handy and that's why we have a bunch of these multicolored spells that you may not see in other versions of domain control as we have the full set of lightning helix which can now gain five life total with the cornucopia in play plus being an instant also means we can maybe trigger cornucopia in our turn and then once again in the opponent's turn so we maximize those life gain triggers and then we've got a couple sweepers, including four copies of Ill-Timed Explosion. This is another multicolor spell, great with Cornucopia. And then we've got a lot of expensive cards we can discard to it, including Leyline Binding and Hurt Migration, so we can easily wipe the opponent's board. And then another sweeper, of course, Sunfall, which can also trigger our Up the Beanstalk to draw additional cards. This is one of the main card draw engines in the deck, and also rewards us for casting five mana cards. Unlike Archangel Wrath, that's often played in these domain decks, we're now playing more five mana cards including two copies of a Roxanne Starfall Savant so this is a 4-3 and when it enters or attacks we get to make a meteorite token which deals two damage to any target when it enters and then also gets to tap for one mana of any color on the following turn so that's a great way to ramp out our more expensive spells it's a multicolored spell that will gain two of cornucopia and it's a five drop that also draws off up the beanstalk so it does a lot of work for us and then I'm also trying two copies of Make Your Own Luck, which is a powerful card draw spell that can plot a card among the top three cards of our library, and then the rest goes into our hand. And then uh, if we get to exile a Herd Migration or an Atraxa and cast it for free on the following turn, that's an easy way to take over and uh, get the most out of it. And then once again, a multicolored spell and a five drop, so it will trigger Beanstalk and Cornucopia. And then you cannot really play a Beanstalk deck without a Leyline Binding, which we can often cast for one mana later in the game, thanks to our many basic line types, but it will still draw a card off of the Beanstalk. And then Herd Migration early on can fix our colors, get a basic, gain some life, and later also turns into a win condition, making five 3-3 three, three beasts. And then uh, topping off our curve, of course, three copies of Atraxa. And we do have two copies of Cavern of Souls in our mana base as well, to name Angel usually, so we can make Atraxa uncounterable against control decks, so we can make sure it resolves. And then it can provide a ton of extra card advantage, finding artifacts, enchantments like Leyline Binding. I'm also running two copies of Buried in the Garden as another removal spell. That's another multicolored card for Cornucopia, and then can also help us ramp by enchanting one of our lands that can now tap for additional mana so that can also be quite useful so yeah that's basically our whole deck lots of uh, tri lines here to represent multiple basic line types for domain which can help enable leyline binding and hurt migration and then later in the game we can still cycle these away for flooding out a bit to find more action and then lots of basic lines to find with hurt migration and once again to help a domain and then a one boseju which can also be channeled to maybe take out a creature land or some artifact or enchantment so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a keepable hand bit of life gain here with migration and cornucopia and then a couple board wipes and the rest to have a look golgari mid-range a winnable matchup but if they can pick our hand apart with some discard spells things will get a bit tougher and then now I think I do play headquarters can maybe enable an early leyline binding and then uh, can also maybe set up a turn two lightning helix if we drew it no turn two play kind of plays into our late game all right glissa's pretty good although lightning helix and answer yeah I guess I'm not in a hurry to cast cornucopia can just deal with Glissa, but I can wait and see what else they do. Alright, opponent's gonna draw with the Dread Knights. So now, let's say they had a second Glissa in hand, they don't get to cast it. Probably taking an ill-timed explosion here. Sunfall also makes sense if they want to protect something like Shieldred. And they did take the 5 mana sweeper. Ooh, up the beanstalk is excellent. Hmm. 
And another cornucopia. Well, we've got a lot of life gain here at the ready. And our opponent does have another Glissa, so that could take out our enchantments if it connects. So we can play another cornucopia and then explosion. And then at the very least I have a cornucopia I can discard. So we'll wait to gain life since we can gain two. Okay, I've got another removal spell at the ready. And now we can potentially top deck some of our seven mana cards and cast them. And Archfiends. We don't mind exiling here. Do this first in case we maybe find a Leyline Binding. Another up the Beanstalk, we'll have to wait a turn, although I guess never mind, I can still cast it if I tap carefully. And then it's good practice to enchant a basic land in case of Field of Ruin effects. And now we'll gain four total. And now as soon as we find a five mana card, we're in business. Can probably hang on to Cavern of Souls in case our opponent has another duress they want to cast. That's going to be a frill back. Can blow up one of our artifacts or enchantments. Going for Cornucopia. Just hoping we never top deck an expensive card. And there's up the Beanstalk number four. Yeah, may as well gain one now. Gonna end up cycling Proving Ground. Could do it now, maybe hit Leyline Binding, still cast it. But I guess there's no harm in waiting. Again, if they have a Duress, we can just show them a land. Alright, Liliana's gonna make things a little tricky. So now I have to decide if I cycle this, hope to find an instant Nobody speed play. Namely, Lightning Helix or Leyline Binding. Or if I just discard the Proving Ground, hope not to have top decked an expensive card, basically. I think I should still cycle, but I might regret it here in a second. Alright, I did not regret it. And then Liliana's probably the scarier card. If I miss for a few turns, this could ultimate, which is bad. I think we can beat some creatures, especially with Cornucopia gaining more life. And yeah, now our opponent is also forced to discard. I think Gets rid of Gopher Throat. We all have things we'd rather. So we've got some time to top deck out of it, but for now just a land. Opponent with a creature land that can apply more pressure. Drop it. But any 5 plus mana card and we're in business. Alright, that counts. Could have probably tapped a little bit better. And then it's probably worth it to discard to wipe the board. So now if they want to use both modes of Dread Knight, they're not attacking with the Cottage. Liliana keeps blossing. Come on, Leyline Binding. There we go. And uh, what to get rid of here as we draw four cards. Liliana's probably scarier. I think I can wait on the life gain with Cornucopia since we likely find something else better. Okay, Lightning Helix, also an answer to Liliana, so I can deal with the Dread Knight instead. And yeah, didn't draw anything too exciting here, but can uh, answer Liliana. And getting five life total. And it's just a matter of time until we find something more impactful. So 
So the college has a lot of work to do. Another lightning helix. Okay, just gonna hang on to it. Most of our lands can be cycled, so those are essentially redraws. So we're down to 25. And there's a herd migration. All right. So that'll draw four cards. And uh, we'll see what else we draw into. I guess I'll gain the one. A Roxanne could be fun. And I could still cast it now. If our opponent's playing Devious Cover Up, that's maybe a reason to hold it until after. Sure, we'll be patient. Opponent's just gonna go for the throw the token, so that could have answered Roxanne. So it doesn't seem like a board wipe is incoming. And then this will also draw four cards with up the beanstalk. Edict deals with another token, so opponent's trying. Can still triple block the cottage if it attacks, since binding cannot exile it. And yeah, this is a situation where Roxanne is a little bit better than Archangel of Wrath, since it actually triggers up the Beanstalk. So we'll start there. If they try and block with Cottage, I can finish it off with Lightning Helix, but also could have maybe used a Meteorite. And there's Atraxa, and yeah, that's uh, probably all we need. Just have to be a little bit careful that we don't end up decking with 4 up the Beanstalk, since it's not optional to draw. But it's not like we're up against a blue-white control deck with endless board wipes. Well, this is kind of the perfect matchup to showcase the strength of five-color domain. They get to block, but we still have the helix here. Pass a turn. Could have also drawn more with ill-timed explosion, but with 19 cards left, I'll be a little careful. So let's do some math. Our opponent's at 12. So now 15. Probably fine to binding. Draw four more. Can attack for 10. Deal two more with a meteorite. So another Lightning Helix would do it, although I don't have many of those left. Alright, could cast another Herd Migration, just in case. And pass a turn. Discard six cards. Gladly. Our opponent fought a good fight. But yeah, four copies of Up the Beanstalk was eventually going to get them. And now the only mistake we can make is cast three more spells before attacking to trigger Up the Beanstalk. Cottage is gonna show up just to watch as they explode. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, got a pretty slow hand. All tap lands, 
let's say we do not face a very aggressive deck, then we're looking at turn three up the Beanstalk. Could also use Herd Migration to set up turn four Buried in the Garden. And then we're off to the races. If I do find Leyline Binding, I will be able to cast it for one mana at least. So yeah, not a great hand, but maybe still keepable. And then I should lead with Headquarters, so Proving Ground sets up a one mana Binding. All right, turn one Swiss Spear, not what we wanted to see. The saving graces that were on the play. So we'll likely need to use Hurt Migration first, can get a basic, and then next turn we can bury it in the garden as our opponent plays the Slick Shot. They may fear a removal spell at instant speed, so they may not go all out on the Slick Shot. So, pass it for now. And then I don't have a strong preference for which basic to get. Probably either red or white to make a Lightning Helix easier to cast. Opponent going for Scoundrel, so at most one non-creature spell left to be cast. Okay, and our opponent just passing the turn, so... All in all, could have been worse. And now I'll just get rid of the slick shots. And then cards we would like to draw. Cornucopia can maybe gain more life. Leyline Binding with double Beanstalk is going to be great. And then we're getting close to casting an Atraxa, which can also stabilize us. So we've got a lot of good top decks left at least. But now we're tapped out, so our opponent can maybe move in on their pump spells. Also can't go wrong drawing Lightning Helix against Mono Red. For now Monstrous Rage. Yeah, last turn that would have dealt quite a bit more damage. Infusion as well, so we're taking 9 at the very least. Okay, we fall to 8. And Roxanne the draw, not bad. So we can uh, start there. Target the Scoundrel, because even with another monster roll, this would only have two toughness, where a Swiss Spear may be able to survive. And then next turn we could cast Herd Migration to stabilize the ground. I will admit that Archangel of Wrath might have been a little bit better in this situation. As our opponent casts an Atali's Favor, hitting another Flowstone Infusion. So we can still trade at least. Fall to five. And uh, sure, I guess we'll just cast Herd Migration now. Or we can keep it to gain three and cycle a few Beanstalks, hoping to find something more impactful. Although making five beasts is still pretty impactful, I would say. So let's just uh, go with that. And hope we don't get burnt out. But between four copies of Lightning Helix, four copies of Cornucopia, potentially Atraxa, we have some ways to uh, gain life here if needed. For now, just a Scoundrel. And play with fire going face, all right. So now we are within range of a lightning strike. Opponent did keep on top and Sunfall the draw. So safe to say we could be staring down lethal next turn. So I gotta try my best to draw into an answer. Well, that gains three life, so that could do it. And an Atraxa, which I currently cannot cast. So can go ahead and attack. Can maybe leave one beast back on defense. And then the safest would be to do this now before opponent can lightning strike in response. Otherwise it's going to be an awkward game of chicken where if we blink first the opponent can take us out in response.
All right, that's six life. Feeling pretty comfortable, but we'll see what happens. Another Itali's favor, so we can still maybe trade here. And hit Sukumano. So now our opponent seems dead on the way back. And we could also clear a path, but all out attack will do it. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? Um, we'll need a third land for Cornucopia, but if we find it, the hand's pretty functional. An untapped land would be preferred. Opponent on human could be Boros tokens. And we found the untapped land, so turn three Cornucopia. Maybe even a turn four Roxanne, and now with Island, that's a possibility. Yeah, turn four Roxanne on the play can maybe keep attacking against a deck that doesn't have much removal. And then generates extra mana, take out small creatures. But our opponent does have an excellent start here with a turn two Demolition. Luckily they couldn't follow it up with a Knight Errant. But now a Recruiter represents a ton of damage next turn. I think I still Cornucopia to set up Roxanne. But uh, yeah, if they have a Recruiter, we may not survive. They don't have the white mana for War Leader's Call at least, but it's going to be another Demolition. Well, we do have a couple Sweepers we could draw as well, which would be nice. For now, it's just going to be Roxanne, gain two. Take out an Inspector. And then next turn I could already cast an Atraxa. In case can take out Roxanne. They can solve the case, so next turn they get to deal two damage with each of those. So a Sweeper would still be nice. Cornucopia instead. Well, I guess we'll have to settle for Atraxa. Gaining four life with Cornucopia. I think that's going to be our best chance. Although, funnily enough, another case could finish off Atraxa, since they have seven creatures in play. Might also be dead to another Anthem effect. Although, at least then we'll maybe still gain seven. Okay, so assuming we don't die, what's the best way to stabilize? Probably by getting a white source, so binding only costs one mana. And then grab a Helix to gain more life. And a Sunfall. We'll have to discard to hand size. Probably one Cornucopia. And maybe just another one here. Alright, let's see what happens. Another case. Yeah, that's a good game here. Seven creatures exactly enough to take out Atraxa, otherwise we might have gotten there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, this hand's definitely on the slow side. Only have three basic line types. So this one's a little sketchy. No up the beanstalk to go with binding either. I'll take a mulligan. This hand is not great, we're uh, only working with one color, but if I find green mana, which is most of my lands, we can uh, be off to the races. So I'll try this, maybe don't need Lightning Helix as much when we have double herd migration, and then Binding is a bit more versatile. Put on black-white. All right, for now, I guess I'll play another mountain. A lot of our green sources will enter tapped, so we'll have to wait another turn before we can actually use the herd migration. At least with an island, we can use ill-timed explosion. And we are up against Esper. All right, in that case, we can maybe be patient, let them play another creature, and then explosion to wipe the board next turn.
opponent's keeping up some mana. Yeah, I guess I'm not in a hurry. Can just keep up herd migration. Might have to discard one migration to the explosion, although binding also deals six damage. For now the opponent's just kind of sculpting their hand a bit. Maybe they're sitting on an Erti Resurrected to counter. But the late game favors us, so they're the ones that need to apply pressure. Now, which lane to get? I might need double white. So I could grab a plains, could get forest. But uh, now let's go for plains. And find another binding. Now I do not have a uh, up the beanstalk to really go off with these bindings. I think I'm fine just passing again. And then maybe using binding before Rafine attacks. As opposed to casting the ill-timed explosion. And then Lightning Helix can be an answer to the uh, Anchorage, at least. Bonan does have the air tie, as we suspected. So we'll get to draw. So now I could just take the hits and then Explosion next turn. And unless they have no more lies, they won't be able to counter it. But if they do, that could be annoying. So maybe by using Binding now we can flush it out, and then next turn I can Explosion to safely wipe the board. Sure. It doesn't seem like they have it. Alright, never mind, get lost. So Rafine attacks, discarding Rafine. And an Atraxa we're close to casting, but for now we'll wipe the board. Do have to discard Hurt Migration plus something else. And then we still have Lightning Helix available. And next turn, Uncounterable Atraxa. So they would need a Tide Binder to counter the trigger, which is a card that sees play in these Esper decks. Anchorage, I'll probably take out before they get a map token. So now they don't have mana for Tide Binder. And Atraxa is probably gonna seal the deal. Get lost is fine. Didn't quite find a replacement Atraxa, but uh, Cornucopia has our artifact. Roxanne is our creature. Binding or enchantment, sorcery, instant, and land could make it a plains. Restless Fortress is getting in. And Danik. So start with Cornucopia. And then Roxanne can gain us two life. And I can maybe explore once. And play Proving Ground. Okay, don't expect Roxanne to survive, but we have another one. Not under too much pressure. Explosion can draw two. Might end up cycling more of my tri lands. And then sooner or later, we're gonna find more win conditions. This attack implies an Igancho to deal for damage. Um, I think I take it, because that way I get to attack with Roxanne, trigger it, maybe deal two to Danik, and then if they channel Iganjo, I can still play another Roxanne to finish it off. And more mana is certainly useful. So 
So we'll see if that's the case. Otherwise, I might have wasted two damage, but that's fine. All right, Wandering Emperor, so that's a similar situation. Exiles Roxanne. I'll just play another one, deal two to the Emperor. And then I can just draw two with the explosion. And uh, what else? Probably fine to play one of these tapped, cycle the other. I guess we are sort of out of card draw. Can still maybe use the map tokens. And let's go for the throw deals with Roxanne. But it's just a matter of time until we find up the beanstalk and completely take over. So do I mind if they attack? Could Lightning Helix Danic, but I would rather exile it. So sure. And another explosion, so Cornucopia first. And gain four life. And do I want to discard anything? Not really. Again, buried in the garden. Exaldenic. And then I do have double lightning helix available to take care of the fortress if I really want to. Yeah, I guess at this point that's reasonable, or I can just channel Boseju and keep Helix for later. Don't think there's any enchantments that I need to keep this for, plus we still have a binding. So yeah, just waiting till we find another Herd Migration or Atraxa. The opponent's deck is unlikely to play Jace, which is... Kind of our main concern is getting decked against these uh, more controlling decks. Another Cornucopia. Alright, I guess I'll just gain two life here. And pass a turn. Cycle Garden. Michael Headquarters. And there's a Atraxa. Although, looks like I tapped all my caverns, so this is currently counterable. So, maybe should have uh, paid more attention to my lanes, because they could easily have another airtie in hand. No reason to play into it. So we'll be patient. Alright, and now I can cast Atraxa using Cavern. Probably no need to play Beanstalk first and gain 12 here. 21 cards remaining. And Herd Migration is the main card I'm interested in. Back up Atraxa, Helix. Can maybe burn them out. And I don't think our opponent's packing too many sweepers, so... I'll just cast the Migration now. And go for the throw to Troxa, that's fine. And our opponent concedes, they're just out of answers here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, this I can keep. Can cast a turn to Beanstalk, and then we have four basic land types, so two mana binding, we'll draw. Should be able to find land four to eventually bury it in the garden as well. And now I could maybe cast a 1 mana binding. Still gonna beanstalk first. Facing a red-white with a bivouac. 
Might be kind of a more mid-rangey deck. Never mind, just uh, red-white tokens. Do have a Sunfall in hand already. And we can answer the Warden before it does too much damage. So yeah, this hand's quite promising. Could have played my land first, but it's not like the single mountain is going to do anything for me. Okay, next turn Cornucopia into another Binding is an option. And we can start gaining life, so we don't get randomly burnt out. Main phase reinforcements, maybe another Warden. Just an attack for one. Okay. Stick to the plan, I think. Could even double Ley Line Binding. If I cast one now and one in the opponent's turn, I maximize my life gain with Cornucopia. But I'm not sure if I'll cast a second binding since we might want to set up Sunfall. Could argue that the Blood Tokens may be the better target, but they might still be sitting on uh, Knight Errands to Convoke, in which case it's better to take away their white creatures. But yeah, with a blood token they could maybe cast a Gleeful Demolition and play Recruiter to give the team haste, which can represent a lot of damage. But then I guess we could still binding the blood token in response. There's a Warleader's Call, so that's a good target for binding. Although now I'm tempted to up the Beanstalk first. How greedy do we get? Nah, I think I'll just play it safe here. Gain my life, draw my card. Explosion, another sweep or two. So yeah, pretty brutal draw for the opponent to face here. Now I can still bury it in the garden and then up the beanstalk afterwards. Finding Lightning Helix and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Now with double Cornucopia this Lightning Helix could gain me 7 life, so there's no way they can ever get to us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we've got a Keeper. Don't have any real interaction yet, but we've got good mana, lots of life gain, and uh, the interaction will follow. Blue-White Soldiers, a deck that's definitely fallen out of favor recently. Thalia could punish us, but they don't have it. So we'll uh, get the Beanstalk out there. And a Lightning Helix is good interaction. When it does have a Commando, can blow up our enchantments or artifacts. And a 3-power creature still hits pretty hard too. Opponent is stuck on two lanes at least. So I don't really want a Lightning Helix Commando and have them sacrifice it in response. So I think I'm still on just playing Cornucopia. And if they want to blow it up, so be it. Opponent negates. So playing lots of flash creatures and counter spells maybe. For a slightly different build. Yeah, that does play pretty well into these tap-out control decks that mostly play at sorcery speed. I could now both Beanstalk and Lightning Helix, although my life total is starting to dwindle. If I Lightning Helix the Commando now while they can't use Kralf and they sacrifice it, then I also don't gain any life. So that's kind of rough. We do have some sweepers in the deck we can draw, Hilltimed Explosion and uh, Sunfall, but another Negate could counter those. So yeah, things are getting a little tricky here. I think I might be on cast another Beanstalk and then use Herd Migration to ensure my next land drop. And maybe actually start with Herd Migration since holding Boseju could be useful as an answer to Skrelv. And then I can get Swamp here. Yeah, 
and cast Beanstalk. And our opponents got another counterspell, protect the negotiators. Alright, at least we got rid of uh, their counterspell here. Now the Sky Strike can draw them more cards. But now we could maybe use Buseju on Skrelv and then still Helix the Officer to get rid of their card draw engine. That works. And do this now before they can use a counter spell. And then with Cavern we could make an uncounterable Atraxa in two turns. The life gain from migration should help keep us alive here. Okay. If they can flash in a creature end of turn, we could still die. If they don't, this would be an attack for five. But it's not guaranteed that Atraxa wins us the game, because they might be able to remove it. Another Lightning Helix. The plot thickens. So, could be a slightly safer play than going for Atraxa. Our opponent also could have been using the Beachhead in the meantime to pump their team. So they're clearly sitting on more counter spells, which could also include another negate. So I think we may as well try Atraxa and hope they had a counter spell for creatures in hand that they now can't use. But if they just have a removal spell, we're still dead and looks like they might have it here. All right, yeah, the turn to commando was good. And a soul partition will clear a path. Jeez. Feels bad when we're about to stabilize and take over, but that's the power of kind of the merfolk approach of early threats backed up by counter spells and instant speed interaction. So, can uh, see what we would have picked up, but not gonna matter. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our hand? It's a little slow, but it's got some good value cards. Plus we have the mana to cast Explosion, so that can catch us back up against aggro. And aggro it is, turn one Kumano. So we're gonna need some untapped lands along the way too. Make that red green with a slick shot. Okay, so for now beanstalk, and then next turn we can maybe explosion. So hoping they play more creatures as opposed to deal a lot of damage with the creatures they already have in play. All right, just an attack for four, and our opponent passes back. So definitely going for. Explosion here, although I guess Buried in the Garden is also an option. They could have some protection spell that gives Hexproof and Indestructible, which I guess saves their creature regardless. A Pump spell more likely to save their creature through Explosion than Buried, I guess. So maybe it is still Buried in the Garden, which will also give me an extra mana for next turn. And leave them with just an etching of Kumano, hopefully. They might be using the adventure on questing druid. Yep, that makes sense. So they didn't want to cast it in their turn because otherwise those exalt cards go to waste. So that explains their sequencing. They did find a picnic ruiner as well. And then now the explosion looks good. At 10 life, I don't think we can afford to make our own luck, otherwise we're just gonna face lethal next turn. So let's wipe the board. I will have to discard make your own luck, but next turn we can cast Atraxa. 
And then what else do we discard? Maybe a tap land. And then our Truxa should be able to stabilize us. Opponent plotting another show off. Good thing our Truxa has flying. And what goodies do we get? Make your own luck could be fun, since we already have a herd migration. Get a Boseju, Beanstalk, and a Roxanne. And a Lion can go. Can they get past Atraxa? Still happy to just trade for the slick shots since we can easily outgrind them from this position. So step on Monstrous Rage. And a Witch Talker Frenzy, so they do get to trample for a healthy amount here. But we also gain seven, so. We're still alive, and now Ancient Cornucopia, another way to gain more. So I'm not hating Cornucopia into Roxanne. And then if I keep green mana untapped, I can still channel Boseju to destroy another enchantment. Draw a card, gain two life. And then I guess I'll wait on channeling Boseju. Or do I? Yeah, I guess I do. Maybe they play some more pump spells on the etching. It's gonna be a code breaker instead. And end of turn channel. Aligning Helix is excellent. All right, I think we're in the clear. So we could herd migration. I think I kind of prefer just Beanstalk, make your own luck, and then I can still Helix in the opponent's turn to gain more life of Cornucopia. So step one, attack with Roxanne. See if we can finish off questing Druids, or I can play it safe in case they have another pump spell and go after Codebreaker, although I guess they might be able to save that one too. Eh, I think this is still maybe the play. And then Beanstalk, draw. Wait on the life gain. Now we can gain two. Find a binding, that's perfect. And how about a free hurt migration next turn? And then we've got a one mana binding. I can play another Cornucopia too. And uh, could Helix now, and then still have Binding in their turn. Okay. Back up to 16. Binding is gonna gain two life, draw two cards. Next turn Migration, draw two more cards. So I'm surprised their opponent is still playing. Yeah, I'll take one. No need to binding just yet. Go ahead and attack. Cast our migration. I could cast another one since a red green aggro doesn't usually play any board wipes. And we'll pass it back. Another questing druid. Did actually find a slick shot, so that's maybe one way they can still deal a burst amount of damage. 
but uh, sadly for them we have double binding. So we're gonna have to crush their hopes and dreams. And our opponent didn't seem to have lethal anyways. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And double cavern not doing me too many favors here. So I can't actually cast any of my spells. If I do find a green source, it's likely going to be tapped. So then we have to wait another turn before we can beanstalk. So I think this is a little too sketchy. Okay, this I can try. Migration fixes my colors. Can either get blue or white. I'll get rid of one explosion. And depending on the matchup, we might need a sweeper more than spot removal. And braided bluffs. Alright, well, with a second migration, we can still get our author color sorted. So we'll get our planes for now. So I can binding if needed. And there's a the reinforcements, so it is just a Boros Tokens deck, it seems. So the ill-timed explosion should be good. And an Evangelist. A good target for Leyline Binding, admittedly. Although if we just Migration, we can Explosion, they'll be left with a Bat token. That's not too bad. Or I could even wait a turn and then use the Buried in the Garden to Exile the Evangelist. And then maybe explosion the turn after. Yeah, I can buy that. And since we exiled it, they don't get the bat. Epicure could also see Recruiter here to deal some hasty damage. Nope, just another Epicure, maybe a Convoked Knight Errant. Bunnycorn. Well, that's still gonna get swept up here. So, cast Explosion. And then... Yeah, probably get rid of the Cornucopia. And a land. Could actually discard the tap land, keep Mountain, so I can still cast a 2-mana Binding. But maybe the extra green mana future is gonna be useful. And our opponent has already seen enough. But from this position, while we don't have any of our big payoff cards, Roxanne can still keep some tokens in check, whereas Leyline Binding can deal with the larger threats or enchantments that they might present. So I'm pretty comfortable playing it out from here. Alright, so we get to see our fun build of the domain deck in action. Of course, at the core, it still an Atraxar ramp deck. So if you can kind of stabilize the board and resolve an Atraxar and take over, that's usually the game plan. And then once you do, there's not too many decks that can still beat you. Maybe a blue-white control deck with Jace as a win condition that can still mill you out. That's certainly one of the weaknesses. But uh, yeah, if you're struggling against control, you can also add cards like the Recruiter to this deck. And then the combo of Recruiter plus Herd Migration can also deal a lot of damage out of nowhere to maybe beat those control decks, which otherwise rely on their Sorcery Speed Sweepers. So there's definitely still ways you can fine-tune the deck to improve the control matchups. But uh, otherwise, you're mostly just hoping that you don't stumble against aggro, because once you get your life gain engines going, there's not many decks that can stop you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!